All right, in this video, we are going to review a few basic pandas concepts using a real life data set about K pop idols. Granted, this data set isn't necessarily up to date, so don't fault me for that, but you know, it's a data set, it's real life. Uh, the topics we're going to cover are filtering, value counts, filtering and value counts creating new columns, and date, time, year calculations. We might cheat a little bit for this one, but it's fine. Uh, the very first thing we need to do is read in our data. Our data set is kpopidols.csv. So at the very basics, we're going to import pandas as pd, and then read in the CSV of kpopidols.csv. Now, even though we don't have to get any fancier than this right now, I'm actually going to throw in a couple options. Um, they don't matter in this data set, but they're ones I always like to use. Uh, so what the first one does here, max columns, it says if there are more than, you know, uh, the default number of max columns, display all of your columns. So if I have 100 columns, by default, pandas will hide a lot of them. But if I say max columns none, that sets it up so all 100 will be displayed. Secondly, float format like this, uh, it means if there is a number that is long and looks awful like this, I don't know what that number is, add commas to it. So when it's displayed in the data frame, instead of being that big ugly thing, it will be this nice, slightly more attractive ugly thing. So I always like to throw those two in there. It just helps me to, you know, have a kind of baseline for doing my uh, analysis in a visual sense. So, all right, kpopidols.csv. We clearly didn't need, you know, more columns in this. We clearly don't have any large numbers in here, but it's fine. Let's get rolling. What is the percentage of male versus female kpop idols? So when we look at this data frame, we see there's a column called gender, and it has M or it has F in it, as far as we can see. What we could do is add up all the M's and add up all the F's and then divide by the total number of uh, rows in the data set. But no, let's do it an easier way. We say, hey, data frame, give us the gender column. And now just count the number of M's and count the number of F's. So value counts is going to go through that column and say, let's add up all the times M shows up. Let's add up all the times F shows up. This isn't a percentage though, right? This is just a raw number, 767 men, uh, 634 women. If I want to turn this into a percentage, I can add normalize equals true. So it'll say about 52% male, about 48% female. Some people like to multiply by 100 in order to make it uh, look a little bit nicer. You can do that if you want, that's fine. One thing that this ignores if we do value counts is whether we're missing any data. So for example, other group here, nan, 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 that's what Panda says if some data doesn't exist there. It might turn out that we don't have recorded genders for some people. If we do value counts, it's only going to do this percentage and this count of data that actually exists. If we want to say, oh, hey, what about the data that's missing? If we shift tab tab on top of that, we can see one of the options here is drop NA. By default, it does drop NA values or missing values. If we want to not drop missing values, we can say drop NA equals false. But because this is a pretty small data set and it is handcrafted, uh, everyone's gender is filled in there. So we don't really need that, but just know that it's something that could be useful. Next up, not all idols are born in South Korea. Surprise, surprise. Make a horizontal bar plot of the top five countries they're from with the longest bar at the top. So we're going to do this step by step. So first off, what column are we interested in? We're interested in the country column. What we want to do is count the number of people from every single country. The way we're going to do that is the same way we counted the number of men and women uh, before we added normalize. So I'm just going to say, hey, I would like to count the values of every single country here. So there we go, all the way from South Korea to Philippines. Uh, we're only interested in the top five, though. So if I want the top five, 
now that I have, you know, the top, however many there are, all of them, I can say, give me the top five with dot head five. So now we got South Korea to Thailand, and I want to make a plot. I want to make a chart of this. If I want to make a chart, because this is a series, anything that's ugly is a series, anything that's attractive uh, is a data frame. Because it is a series, I can just put dot plot on it, and it'll work. It'll put this right here on the x-axis uh, and this number right here on the y-axis. So I throw a dot plot on there. It's awful. You've never seen anything so terrible. Why is this a line graph? Specifically, we're looking for a horizontal bar plot. So we need to say, oh, hey, I would like a horizontal bar plot. Then it looks like this, and it says, oh, South Korea is at the bottom. Thailand's at the top. That's not what we're looking for, right? We want the longest bar at the top. So by default, when you do a dot plot, I'm going to comment this part out just so we can look at it. It starts plotting from the very topmost value, but if you're doing a horizontal bar plot, it puts that on the bottom. So this is bottom, then this, then this, then this, and then Thailand ends up being at the top. So if we want to put South Korea at the top, there are a few different ways to do it, um, but one of the easiest ways is to just reverse the order that South Korea to Thailand goes in here. So instead of biggest to smallest here, I can just say, oh, hey, let's sort the values. By default, it sorts it from smallest to biggest. Now that South Korea is at the bottom here, if I do dot plot, there we go. South Korea is at the top. Everything's great. For only the idols born in China, what are the top three cities they were born in? I always, before I answer a question, like to do a df.head just to remind myself what the data set looks like. So right here, I'm looking for people who are born in China, which means their country is going to be China. This means I need to start filtering. I'm going to say, hey, data frame, only give me the rows where country is equal to China. And now here we go. Everyone's just from China. And now I want to say, when I'm only looking at these idols that are born in China, what are the top three cities they are born in? So that's the birthplace column right here. And what I want to do is, again, count the number of times each birthplace shows up. So I'm going to say, hey, give me birthplace. That's the column for birthplace. And count the number of times each one of those birthplaces shows up. In order to get the top three, I can just say dot head three, and there we go. Everything's great. Next up, what group has the most members in our data set? Again, df.head to look at it. Now, in theory, we could look at group and other group. We're not going to do that. We're just going to look at the group column here. What group has the most members? Well, the group that shows up the most inside of this column is going to be the group that has the most members. So again, all we want to do is say, let's get that group column and count the number of times each one of those groups shows up. So it looks like NCT is the group that has the most members in our data set. Save a CSV file of just the members of Cosmic Girls, calling it cosmicgirls.csv. So what I want to do is, if I'm only looking for the members of Cosmic Girls, I need, hey, places where group is equal to Cosmic Girls, in the same way that up here I filtered just for China. So I'm going to say, hey, data frame, find me places, all the rows, where group is Cosmic Girls. And there we go. It's there. It's fine. It's good. Um, two different things I could do now. One thing I could do is just immediately save it to a CSV. I could say, I'm going to save a CSV called cosmicgirls.csv. I add index.false, so this index on the left-hand side here doesn't get saved as a column. I could run this, and that would be fine. Another way of doing this, just in case you want to make sure you're doing everything fine, because what if I misspelled cosmic here, right? What if I called, what if I put two S's in here? 
it's not going to give me an error. It's just going to turn out that, you know, it's not going to select anyone from Cosmic Girls because uh, I misspelled it. What I might do here is save this to a variable called Cosmic Girls. And then I can look at it and say, does this data frame look like it's supposed to look? The answer is yes. If I had ended up misspelling Cosmic Girls, I would realize, oh, I did something wrong. Let's go back. So now that I have this data frame that's just filtered for Cosmic Girls, then I can save it. Cosmic Girls CSV index equals false, just to make sure this column here doesn't get saved. I didn't have to do this, but it's a good way to double check that you're getting the results you think you're getting. Next up, how many idols are members of Super Junior M? What we want to look at is both the group and the other group column. Now, if you were doing this in a much less effective way, you could filter one at a time. I could say, find me the places where group is equal to Super Junior M. Great, we have two there. Um, I could just do a cat's walking across my keyboard. I could just do a dot shape here, and I could say, okay, I have uh, two rows, 10 columns, or I could do a len here, which is somewhat illegal, but it's fine. Uh, and that says I have two different, two different uh, rows here. Now I could do this one at a time. I could say, here's group, and then additionally, where other group is equal to junior M. And I could count those separately. But what I really want here is I want to say, um, in one go, tell me places where either group is super junior M or other group is super junior M. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, I'll just copy this. I'm going to put parentheses around the very first thing I want to do. And then I'm going to put parentheses around the second thing I want to do. Now, this condition has parentheses. This condition has parentheses. And in the middle is a pipe. Pipe means or. You cannot type or in here. I think it actually gives you a, an error message. Yeah, it yells at you. It says the truth value of a series is ambiguous. And you're like, I don't know what that means. It's fine. You just have to use a pipe here instead of or because this is pandas, not normal Python. So this says, find me all the rows where either group is super junior M or other group is super junior M. Next up, create a new column called age. That is the age of the idol. Now, we have a date of birth here. Um, and what I'm saying we need to do is we're just going to subtract this from the current year. So 2021, so 2021 minus 1996, 25 years old. We don't care if they had a birthday or not. Now, how are we going to do this? A few different ways. If we want to be exceptionally fancy, we can use pd.toDateTime to convert date of birth to a date time. It looks like this. I mean, it looks exactly the same. Um, but if we convert this to a date time, an actual thing that knows it's a date, I'm going to call this birth date. If I have this birth date column, even though it looks the same as date of birth, this is actually a date time. So I can specifically say, hey, give me just the year. Just give me just the year from this date. And it's going to give us just the year. And I can do something like, hey, let's subtract it from 2021. And there we go. We have our age. So df age equals this. I'm also going to convert it into a number. I'm going to try integer. If anything's missing here, it's going to give me an error. But no, I guess everyone filled in their ages. So there we go. Um, I said, hey, convert the date of birth to a date time, pull out just the year, just the year from that date time, subtract it from 2021, turn it into an integer. Another way we could do this, if you don't like date times, if we have date of birth here, this is a string, right? 
if you wanted to explain to me where in the string the year was, one of the things you could do is say it's going to be everything before that first dash. So I can say, hey, string, I want to split you on that dash. And now I have a list, first item, second item, third item. And this part's kind of weird. If I want to say, always give me the first item, I do str0. It gives me the first one. And then I can say, hey, turn that into an integer. And so in the same way that I got the year before, um, I got the year this time, it's just a different technique. It ends up giving me exactly the same result. So df.age equals that. And there we go. Everyone's got an age now. So whether we do it the formal way by converting to a date time or a slightly less formal way by doing string manipulation, either are fine. Who are the four youngest idols in our data set? So if I look at my data set, got my data set. Uh, there are a few ways to do this too. I can say sort values by equals age, and it's going to sort everybody by their age. And I'll say, hey, just give me the top four youngest people, 16, 16, 16, 16. Now, one thing some of my students did, I thought it was pretty fun, is the idea that what if there are more than four people in the data set who are actually 16? If I'm asking for head four, it's only going to give me four, and I don't know if there are more that are actually 16. So another way we could do this is say, hey, give me the minimum age. The minimum age is 16. Then I can say, find me all of the places where this, the idol's age is the same as the minimum age, just to make sure that if there were five or six or seven people who were 16, uh, you would still be able to get all of them. Of course, if there were only three people who were 16 or two people who were 16, then this wouldn't work. It would only give us two or three results. What is the median age of male versus female items, items, uh, idols? If we look at the data set, we're going to say, okay, we're interested in the age, but I would like everyone to be put into two groups, groups based on their gender. So I can say, hey, let's put you in groups based on your gender, and then grab the age column and calculate the median of it. And it says, there we go. 25 for female and 26 for male. There you go. That's it. So basics of filtering, value counts, filtering and value counts, along with a little bit of new column creation and some date time year calculations.